Are you a TPT seller that has not quite made the shift from creating paper products to creating Google Slides? Well, in today's video, we are going to look at Google Slides and how to make products two different ways, one with purchased clip art and fonts, and one with just using the tools that are right in Google Slides. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Lorianne, and this is It's All Primary. If you are a teacher that is looking to sell TPT products and you need some how-tos, tutorials, or you are looking for different teacher productivity skills or strategies, then click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. We want to help you enjoy the teaching journey and if you are doing a side hustle, teacher side hustle, then helping you with that too. So today we're going to look at um, Google Slides. If you are a TPT seller and you're just kind of been <laughs> hedging <laughs> to get these things done, I feel your pain. When I started TPT not too long ago, I was doing mainly paper products. And I honestly didn't want to do digital products because I kept hoping we would come back to school five days a week. But here we are online. So digital products have come in handy. I'm going to turn the camera onto my screen and I'm going to show you two types of Google Slides. One is made strictly on Google Slides with the tools, features that they have there. And then I'm also going to show you how to create Google Slides in PowerPoint so that you can save artists' work, such as clip art and fonts, without uh, breaking the terms of use. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when I turn the camera. We are going to start with creating Google Slides from directly from Google. So go into your drive, provided you have a Gmail account. Click New and go to Google Slides. And I've already got one. Oh, yeah, I can use that one too. And it will automatically pop up with themes and everything. It might give you ideas as to something you would like to do. I tend to create my own. I'm going to change the page size. If I'm making slides that kids will play with widescreen is what it defaults to, I tend to put things four to three, but I can also do eight and a half by 11 if I want to do page style activities that I could ev even print. So if you want to print them down the road, then create them at eight and a half by 11. In fact, if you're selling these as products, you might want to do them as eight and a half by 11 because then that's a selling feature that you can advertise these as both digital slides to use online or print them. We're just going to do right now a uh, slide image size that also is uh, compatible with boom cards. Let me just clear these. Now you might want to just go straight into this and add a text box and start typing. If this is going to be something that goes online, then add some color. <laughs> color is a little bit more interesting to look at, especially if it's not being printed. In order to color, you can go to background and just insert a color right here. You pick something light or something dark, depending on what else you're going to do with it. Like I said, there's an opportunity if you want to use one of the existing themes. So you can start with a color slide. If you have brand colors, you could easily have your background as one of your brand colors. Um, one of my brand colors is a shade of blue, kind of some bluish gray. So I'll just use this one for now. And then I can have this set as the background. If I don't right click duplicate, then I get a blank one. Now on top of this, I am going to add a border of white. So I'm just going to create a shape, which is right here and go for a rectangle. And I'll just probably go like this. And it automatically it comes up as a gray. And um, whether you think it looks like it's white 
on your screen. Go up to the uh, paint can here and just fill the color with white, just in case. As you can see, it's a different color. Now I've got a fairly nice looking slide that I can just now add text to. I am not a lover of Arial. Arial's nice, but there are other fonts I would rather use. One of my favorites is Century Gothic. I do also like ABZ and Comforta. Comforte, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, let me just go with ABZ right now. And when it's a title, it's I'm going to go large. So I'm gonna at least go 60, right? That's ABZ. And then align it to the center. And then I line it again down here so it moves down a bit like that. So now it's the center of the box. So if I adjust the box, that adjusts as well. And then the outline disappears unless I want the outline to stay. So I can go back to it and I can do a border color of black and now I've got a black border around it. So if you just were doing a lot of text, this would be an easy, inexpensive way to create slides. Because right now that it hasn't cost you anything. Google is free, all their tools are free, and if you have your own images and you want to insert your own images, you just go up here to image and upload from your computer or your photos or your if you have pictures already on Drive. You can add voice. Um, what I do in order to add an audio is I use GarageBand and I just record myself and then I just upload it to Drive and then I insert it using audio. I do that when I'm creating a page for directions. So that I'm just gonna leave it at that. Many teachers will, like I said, keep them basic and and there's nothing wrong with that there are a lot of teachers that want products that are clean lines and none of the fancy cutesy stuff so you can easily create a product with that all right we are now in powerpoint and I'm, i'll show you how to make google slides using powerpoint we're going to just go up to blank presentation and then down to create as i did in google slides i will change the design of this to what standard which is for the ratio four to three again you can also change this to eight and a half by eleven if you want to do a worksheet style let me delete these now over on the side you can't quite see it but i have uh, file folders on my desktop and when i'm creating powerpoints i find them much faster i talked about this in the previous video on PowerPoints. I'm going to click the free border one that I have here. Whether I use free borders or not, or paid ones, you still have to A, give credit to the creator of them, and B, you should flatten the, the image. It's usually in the creator's terms of use. So I'm just gonna burst this up to the I usually get it close I don't get it to touch now I can do it this if this way because I am creating this slide landscape a lot of the borders and frames are created in portrait and so if I was to create this in a background let me just delete this for a second but if I was to go up to design and create a uh, background over here where it says picture or texture fill I go to insert and desktop um, borders transparent tent and when it when it goes in it will go in like I said like that <laughs> it's going in portrait not landscape how I can get around that is I can change the offsets on the side here. So I start with the top. I believe I am increase it. And it will eventually show up there that way. And then I want to decrease increase that. And there it is. 
and it's not quite the same but that would be now on every slide as I if I created them oops let me close that okay now what I want to do here with this slide actually I don't like it that way so I'm going to actually go out so what I'm going to do is I don't like this the way this frame is looking I'm going to go to reset background and I'm going to go back over to my desktop drag over that frame and then I'm going to turn it and then just go up to the corner and it's it looks nicer this way than if I went formatting it in the background that's just how I see that and again I just have to right click duplicate and it shows up so if I want to put a title on the top of my slides I'm going to insert a text box and I like to use Miss Kindergarten which is a purchased license and I'll go about 44 so let's say how many something easy um, and again if I write if I'm using a lot of text boxes if I right click in this box I can set this as the default text box and all the boxes that I make now will be at Miss Kindergarten and 44 font. I'm going to drag over some Unifix cubes um, and then just right click copy paste. Let's do this two for now. Okay and I could literally leave this um, slide exactly like this and it would be fine because I could add the box for the students to put their answer in Google Slides. Let me add a couple whoops, let's resize that 2.5 actually let's do 2, it's pretty small there we go so I could do a couple of these I like how the alignment in PowerPoint is it's a little bit more user friendly than Google Slides to me but if I move these over a little bit more and then I want to uh, see whoops I can create a, a shape insert a shape I could put something like that and I could make it red for now and students could put in there. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make it white with a red. So on the side here, so if I double click on here, the, sh the format shape comes up and I want to change the, I don't want the solid, I want the line. And I'm going to move it to, it just seems to always default to blue. I'm going to just default it maybe red. So like that, right? And then I can I can make more of these pretty easily do so I could duplicate this one and then maybe add a few more rods and these particular ones are from Educlips and you pay a little bit more and you are allowed to use them to move if you wanted to. Right so now I can make a bunch of slides. Now, in order to flatten the images, the fonts, clip art, whatever, you go up to uh, File, which is up, sort of out of the picture here, beside PowerPoint, and you're looking for Export. And when you get to Export, you are going to create, save this as, not as a, a PDF, but as a JPEG. So you're going to go to JPEG, and then I'll ask you, do you want them all? I'm going to, I'm going to right now. I'm going to save every slide, and then I'll just call it um, Unifix Cubes. All right, and then export it. Now, what happens is they will create a series of JPEGs in a little file folder if there's more than one. So they're saying that in your desktop you're going to have slides, and I'm thinking, fine, that's okay. Now I'm going to go back to my Google Slides. 
So here's this one that we used earlier. So I got my PowerPoint behind it at the moment. But I'm going to uh, create a new slide. Get rid of this. And now I'm going to insert those slides that I created, those JPEGs that I created from PowerPoint. So I always, sometimes you just have to remember where you got them. So here is a, here's the file folder where it said Unifix Cubes. And there they are, slide one, two, and three. So I really only need two and three if I hold down Command because I'm in uh, on a Mac. And if you see, the, both of them showed up on that. So I'm going to create one more slide and I'm going to take, actually I could have just duplicated that, that's fine. I'm going to take the top one, highlight it, right click or and then go to the back down to the next one and paste it and then I just bring it up to the corners see where the red shows up and bring that in there so now it's in the slide and then I can get rid of that one and that one's almost up there so I'll adjust that and get to the red and there it is so now those slides are in there and Kids can't move those or get rid of them or add more. And then what I would do for the students is I would create a text box or a shape, it doesn't really matter, on top of this existing one. And this is where the students are going to put their answer. So I'll make this box, I think um, it was 48, so I'll try 48 again. Actually, let me put an answer in here, 23. And then we'll put in 48. Actually, let's put in uh, 60. Sometimes you gotta play with it. 72. And then I center it and center in there. So just a little bit. So I know what it's gonna look like. Try not to make your numbers go all the way to the box, depending on it the device that people are using i've had a couple of my slides not work as well because i went all the way to the edge of the box and sure enough on an ipad they aren't aligned then what i just do is i remove that copy it and then i go down here and i paste it because they're almost in the exact same spots if i lined right and so now those are ready for someone to answer. And the moment they put their answer in, the font and size is already there. And there we go. If there's anything more you'd like to know about Google Slides, just let me know. Uh, put a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Tap the like button. Videos are usually posted Tuesdays and Saturdays. Again, Tuesdays are teacher productivity. Saturdays are TPT or Teacher Side Hustle related. Next week we're going to look at boom cards and I have already created one video on that. I'm going to follow up and expand on that one a little bit more so that um, again if you have a new or existing TPT business you want, might want to consider selling boom cards and adding a little bit more money to your pocket. Anyways I hope you have a wonderful day, weekend, holiday it's halloween and uh, we will see you in the next video take care